You may have heard about this small but practical site called Linktree. It does one thing and does it really well. It's a site that aggregates all of your social presence into one place. So why would you need that? Well, sometimes you want to send people to the one place to connect with you in the best way for them. Think of it like a digital business card. I know people don't exchange business cards anymore, maybe they do, but your business card contains all of the information to connect with you. And on that card, people can pick and choose how they want to connect with you. Also, some social media sites give you a tiny little place to put only one link. Instagram gives you one and Twitter only gives you one. GitHub only gives you one, but then they allow Twitter. And Twitch and YouTube give you plenty, but they're kind of off to the side. And if you know the secret handshake on TikTok, they'll give you one too. Looks like I don't know the secret handshake yet. So all of that aside, Linktree is a freemium service. You get most of what you want for free, and you can pay a little more for a little more. And while I'm fine with using external services, I started to think about, can I build and host this myself? And that's when I started looking for an open source alternative, one that I could self-host in my own infrastructure. And that's when I came across Little Link. Little Link is a DIY self-hosted open source alternative to Linktree and other services like ManyLink. It's built on a few principles. One, keep it simple. Two, keep it responsive. Three, use best practices. Four, keep it efficient, or dare I say, performant. And five, make it accessible for those who might need assistance while using technology. So I immediately started searching for a Docker container and... Nothing. Turns out, if you want to use this, you have to modify your own HTML and CSS, and then host it in your own server, which if you're using containers means build your own container to put the server inside, and everything else that comes along with that. So I did what any rational home labber and software engineer would do, and I cloned the repo, and I created a Docker container so all you need to do is pass in environment variables, put it inside of a Node.js server with some additional enhancements and logging, built an entire CI and CD pipeline so that anytime the code changes, the container gets updated, and I kept it open source for everyone to use. And as much as I wanted to rewrite this whole entire thing using React.js, I stayed true to the simplistic nature of Little Link and kept it simple. This is the perfect solution if you're looking for a DIY, self-hosted, open source alternative to Linktree. I mean, what else are you going to do with that domain you bought a long time ago that you haven't used yet? Oh, and a quick note, like all my videos, there will be documentation links inside of the description. And if that sounds good to you, give this video a thumbs up and let's configure Little Link Server. I should mention that because I built a container, you'll need some kind of containerization engine running on your machine. We'll cover Docker and Docker Compose, but feel free to use this on Rancher or Kubernetes or Open Media Vault or Unraid or Portainer or any other platform that runs Containerd or Docker because it should just work on your desktop or your server or your Raspberry Pi. So the first thing you'll want to do is open up a terminal. Now, this could be on this machine or on a server SSH'd in where this container will run. And if you're doing this from a GUI with Rancher, Portainer, Open Media Vault, or Unraid, we'll get to there in a second. But on this machine, you'll want to make sure you have Docker installed. So you should be able to run docker-v and see a version come out. If you don't see a version, look at my documentation and I have links on how to install Docker. And you want to do the same thing for Docker Compose if you're going to use Docker Compose. You should be able to run docker-compose-v and see an output. If you don't see that, I'll also have documentation on that. I'm going to make a folder called little link server. And after we make that folder, let's cd into that directory. Now, if we do an ls, we shouldn't see anything here. Next, we'll want to create a docker-compose file and it's a YAML file. Then we'll want to edit that file. And then in here, we'll paste the contents of our Docker Compose file. And where are we going to find the contents of that Docker Compose file? Well, it's out on my GitHub page. So if you go out to GitHub, techno-tim slash little link dash server, you'll see this little link server I created. And if we scroll down to the documentation, you'll see an example Docker Compose file here. So let's copy and paste this whole Docker Compose file and let's paste it into our terminal. And before we run this, let's talk about a few things. So let's go back to this example and look at some of these environment variables. Now, most of these are self-explanatory. First, we're going to have a service. We're naming it Little Link. Then we're specifying our image right here. And do note that this is not hosted in Docker Hub. 
So if you use this image, it's actually coming from GitHub's container registry. So be sure you add this ghcr.io in front of the image name. And so the image name contains the registry, then contains the path to the server image. And we're gonna pin it to latest, it's totally fine. I, I won't break anything, I promise. Then we're gonna name this container name, and then here are the environment variables we talked about. So first we have a meta title, We'll see what that is here in a minute. A meta description and a meta author. And then we could set the theme to dark or light. I'll show you that here in a second. We can set some icons, our avatars, an alt when we hover on our name or for accessibility, the name and the bio on the page. And then we have lots of environment variables for all of our little links. So these will be links on our web page. For the GitHub environment variable, you would pass in your GitHub landing page or your GitHub profile. For your Twitter, you would do the same. You would pass in a path to your Twitter profile. And the same goes for Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, Discord, TikTok, Kit, you name it. There are about 20 different social media sites that this supports, and that's all thanks to Little Link. I just created the mapping and updating within the container to map those to environment variables you pass in. And as Little Link adds more support for more places, I'll add more to Little Link server. So most of these I've commented out because I don't want to have them on my page. And then we have a footer message and I just say, thanks for stopping by. And closer to the end, these are things you're used to as well. Ports. So on the outside, we're exposing port 8080. And on the inside, I've exposed port 3000, which is the default Node.js port that they use. And then we're saying restart and let's stop. And this is in case it crashes, it'll start it back up. And next are security options for Docker. I typically put no new privileges equals true. And this stops the container from gaining additional privileges once it's started up. And one more thing before we start it up, let's see what Little Link actually looks like without these changes. So if you go out to littlelink.io, you can see what this looks like without my changes. You can see we have a light mode and a dark mode, and then you can see links for all of your social profiles. And this is perfect for that scenario I was talking about, something like Instagram, where they only give you one URL for your profile. In that URL, you could put in this URL and then give people choices of how they wanna connect with you. And if we simulate a mobile device here, this actually looks pretty nice, it's pretty responsive. This is how it would look on a phone. And so before I created this container for it, the way to modify this was actually changing all of the code and then deploying all of that code to some server having it hosted somewhere. And I thought there's gotta be a better way for home labbers and so I created that container. So anyways, back to what we were talking about. I'm about three levels deep on a tangent right now. Back one level on our tangent, we're going to set all these environment variables. And then we'll go all the way back from the tangent to our server and verify our environment variables. So in our Docker Compose YAML, this all looks pretty good. I have those commented out, it's totally fine. You can either uncomment them and update them with your values or comment them or just cut them out altogether, but a comment's totally fine. So now let's save this file. Let's make sure that file exists. Let's cat it out to make sure there's contents and it looks pretty good. So now to start this with Docker Compose, I usually do docker-compose up-d dash dash force recreate. I know I don't need it for the first time, but I like to use the same command every time, so that's what I'm using. And if we run this command, it should create our server and spin it up. Now, all we need to do is open up a browser to this port that we exposed on the outside. So I chose 8080. And if we go to that URL, you can see it's hosted here. And you can see this looks pretty good for passing in some environment variables. So let's compare our environment variables to what we passed in. So here's the Docker Compose that we used right here. So first, I added a meta title of TechnoTim. So this is a meta tag for your HTML. It's basically the title for your page. No, it's not this title. It's actually the title that you can see if you hover on one of the tabs, it's the title of the document. And this helps with SEO. So if search engines crawl it, they know what your page is named. Meta description, same thing. So this is a meta description. You won't see it anywhere on the page, but it's for SEO and bots that crawl your site in order to index them properly. Meta author, same thing. Theme is dark. So if you pass in dark, you're gonna get dark. Pass in light, you're gonna get light. Pass in nothing, I think it defaults to light, but you'll have to check the code and tell me. I think it defaults to light. Next is the favicon URL. So this is a favicon. So this is the icon you see right here in the tab. The avatar URL is this avatar here, and this is a URL to that image. And the avatar alt is the alt name you get when you hover on it. And this also helps with accessibility. So someone who's not able to see or has low or no vision, when they use a screen reader, it'll call this out and read it to them. Name, Techno Tim, that's right here. Bio is right here. 
And then we have our environment variables for all of our services. So you see GitHub, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, Discord, TikTok, and Kit. And then way down here, we have Footer. Thanks for stopping by. And all of these links work. Click on GitHub, it should take you out to my GitHub page. You click on YouTube, it should take you out to my YouTube page. Same with Instagram, same with Twitter, same with all of these. And so let's change a couple things real quick, just to see how easy this is, and we won't have to change any code at all. Let's change a couple values. So let's go back into our server. Let's edit the Docker Compose file, change our theme to light. Let's comment out kit, and let's uncomment LinkedIn and Snapchat. and email, Steam, and Vimeo. Now, obviously you would replace these with your real values. I just have placeholder ones in the example so you know what services this button is gonna use. And then let's change a couple other things. Let's say my name, let's put a nat in front of there. Uh, let's update my bio. Let's say choose your own adventure. And then the footer, let's say, see ya. Okay, let's save that. Let's close out of here. Now let's run that same command, docker compose up dash d dash dash force recreate. That's why I use the same command every time. I don't have to think about it. Hit okay. And I have an error in here. Okay, and docker compose line 27, column eight. Ah, uh, I, I, I think this is it. I think I didn't line up my YAML right. Need to get out my trusty ruler. I'm thinking. Say this again. Oh, that was it. I got my trusty T square for all this YAML editing. Okay, so we're recreating the server. Let's go back. Let's refresh. And here it is. I found a bug. See what's going on. I didn't apply a class here. I'll fix that. I'll fix that before you see this. But imagine that avatar looks exactly like the avatar we saw in the dark mode. Anyways, not important, I can fix that. Um, but you can see here, in just a few environment variables, we updated this page. So now we have our at here. We changed our description. Hey, choose your own adventure. Uh, we have light mode, it's burning my eyeballs. Uh, we took out a few things and we added a few things. So now you can see LinkedIn, now you can see Snapchat, now you can see an email link and Steam and Vimeo. And then we said, see ya at the end. And then let's go undo those changes just to see how easy it is. So back in our server, edit our Docker Compose file, go back to dark mode, comment out email, comment out Snapchat, comment out LinkedIn, comment out Steam, comment out Vimeo. We can keep the rest how it was. Recreate this container. A few seconds later, we go back refresh this page, and we're back to almost where we were before. And hopefully this shows you how easy it is now to spin up a DIY, self-hosted, open source, Linktree, clone-ish kind of site. So this is all based on the work by Little Link. So I'm gonna leave a little link to Little Link in the description so you can go onto that repo and start. Because without this, I wouldn't have been inspired enough to build the Docker container. And I know that this is missing some features, I get it. I tried to keep it simple. And like I said, I didn't want to rewrite this whole application in React, which I considered a few times. But I was so inspired by Little Link and its simplicity, I figured I would keep this container just as simple. And if you'd like to see some feature or something that I'm missing or overlooked or would like to see changed, let me know in the comment section below. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I haven't released it and haven't even figured out if I'm gonna do this yet, but I've been working on this open source project. I wanna to contribute to it. And I, at the same time, I wanna create a container for it uh, so that we can all containerize it. So I'm kind of working on that. Um, the project maintainer has no idea that I'm doing this because I'm doing it as a proof of concept on my workstation right here, uh, making sure that I can take his code, containerize his code uh, so that I can create a container for people to use um, in their home lab to self-host something that I think is pretty cool. It's pretty simple, pretty cool, but uh, much needed. And so that's kind of what I've been working on, this proof of concept. I'm like, I feel like I'm like about, you know, a, a said command and an awk command away from getting this to work, but 